I think it's about time we start our program today. So, so today I will be the host for our program. So my uh, so let me introduce myself first. My name is Yong Qianlin. So uh, from China Institute. So today I'm here with my colleague Chen Xuan Xu. Chen Xuan, do you want to say hi to everyone? 大家好，我是春轩。This is 春轩 ，and Chen also is a Chinese character Spring. So nice to meet you. Okay, 谢谢春轩。So, uh, may I ask how many of you are the first time joining our program? So, if you're first time, you can type it in the chat box. So, you can just raise your hands. So, I see a lot of old friends and some new friends. Yeah, we have our Anna. It's first time joining, and uh, Madeline is third time. Okay, welcome. So, 欢迎 So, as usual, before we start our calligraphy part session, so we will start from one poem we learned before. So, uh, in the follow up email we sent out last time, so we mentioned the poem Chun Xiao. So, spring morning. Do you remember that? So do you have so did you have time to revisit and re uh to watch the recording on the YouTube? So I will give you a very brief introduction about that poem. So we know that the Chun Xiao Spring Morning is written by Meng Hao Ran in the earlier Tang Dynasty. So it's uh, uh it captures the essence of the earlier spring. So what the poet see uh, in the uh, early spring morning. So and also think about so the wind and the rain last night. So and uh, try to find out what's happened last night. So it we if you have a chance to uh, watch the video, so the recording you will see it carries different layers of the meaning. So I hope you had a chance to. Uh, watch that video and uh, learn more about that poem. So, uh, uh, so it's uh, yeah. So now, so the next part will be Chun Xuan. So we'll lead us to re read uh, recite the poem, read aloud the poem. So Chun Xuan, attend. Okay. 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 Now I'll share my screen. Okay, uh, everyone, can you see my screen? 看到了。嗯，好的，谢谢。那我们今天就开始 read aloud. The poem's name is Chun Xiao. So, uh, there I know there are some uh first timers and newcomers. So, firstly, I will read this whole poem, and in this part, you can just listen to uh, get more familiar with the pronunciation of the poem. And then I will uh, guide you to read sentence by sentence. So in that part, you can open, you can turn your uh, microphone and we can read it together. And then we will read the whole poem together. So now first I will read the whole poem. Chun Xiao. 春眠不觉晓 OK, this is the whole poem, 春晓. And then we will read this poem line by line. In this part, I will read slowly, and you can turn on your microphone, and we can read this sentence together. Okay. 春眠不觉晓 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 Yeah, Chu 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 
知多少。花落，花落，知多少？多少 ？OK，OK，、okay. okay, that's the poem. Now we will read it together. 春晓，春晓，春晓，春眠不觉晓，春眠不觉晓。处处闻啼鸟，处处闻啼鸟。夜来风雨声，夜来风雨声。花落知多少，花落知多少。OK， 大家读的都非常好，我听到大家的声音了。好的，这就是我们今天的 Read Aloud。Thank you for reading with me。谢谢的，谢谢大家。OK， 好，谢谢春轩。So we can see that the whole poem is about the spring morning. So what the poet see and saw. So, uh, even if no. Uh, it's still cold in the New York City, but we can see some sign of the early spring here. So the blooming flowers and the trees in the uh, you know uh, in the corner of the street. So I, we think that you know the spring will be here very soon. So yeah, okay. So and we will post the recording link in the chat box so you can uh, uh visit that. So and also I would like to remind everyone. So during our the following sessions, so. Feel free to post your questions in the chat box, and uh, uh, Su Lao Shi will answer them later. So now I'll turn the camera to Eva Su Lao to 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 lead us continue our clinical journey. Su Lao Shi. Yeah, right. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen first. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, okay. All right, welcome everyone to today's fourth um, part of the long term learn session in the theme of Chinese calligraphy. Um, welcome the, the first timers, a little bit about myself. I started learning Chinese calligraphy since elementary school and it's been like decades until now. I'm a, a Chinese calligraphy and painting artist based in New York, and I'm dedicated to teaching as well. And uh, let's move on to today's topic. Yeah. <clears throat> but today is the first session uh, in the theme of Chinese calligraphy. First time we've talked about the basics like uh, writing tools and how you can get started with the practice. Second time we've talked about the seal script, which shows first here as the third topic is the clerical script, which explored the script. And uh, each time we selected a word for everyone to, to practice and I, I do demonstrations and everyone can practice together. Today is same. And uh, we'll introduce the regular script. So this is the development line of all the five scripts that inside of the Chinese calligraphy. Please be noted first when uh, this timeline shows uh, shows the development reached its peak. What this is what shows in this timeline. So it's not the case that each script first show up in history. And second, I arranged the, the regular script as the third script that we, we, we talked about because these three, the seal, clerical, and regular are the most suitable scripts for beginner to start learning. So I put these three together first. Then the running and cursive these two scripts, they, uh, their techniques are more complex and they require 
the learners to, to have a better control of the brush pen, which we will uh, dig into for next session. The last session, I will introduce the running and cursive. So, so that's why I put the order like this, as you can see in the screen, but I chose the regular as the third script topic. And there are many classics under each category, the five categories, uh, considering practicing and learning. It, it's like system. Like last time we explored the clerical, there are many um, different kinds of classics that you can see and uh, learn in, in, in the category of each script. I selected the most famous, the, the five most famous and representable for each script for you to see, like a guideline here. Okay, so um, for today, the, the regular script, please take a look at the screen. And um, the regular script is also called the standard script. I would prefer to call it regular because um, each era has its own standard script. So the standard like is changing a long history, but the regular, the word regular shows, uh, it's, it, it is the most widely spread and commonly used style since it's been invented until nowadays. So although uh, today we use the character, like the simplified version, of the regular script, but this style is still the most uh, commonly used and it's a script taught to the school children because it's well-defined well and uh, not as decorative as other styles. That's why that's so important and it's easily to recognize not due to the personality of the artist. So, Regular script is first invented in Han Dynasty, which is around uh, 200 BC to 200 AD. It's already like invented, being invented at that time, but developed to get matured in Tang Dynasty here, like this. The uh, the Tang Dynasty is around eighth century, eighth century. So the possibility of variation within the regular script is considerable. Take a look of these four examples. These four pictures you see here are from four very famous um, calligraphers that if you ask a Chinese person, they may know their names. The first is Yan Zhenqing, second, Ouyang Xun, third, Liu Gongquan, fourth, Chu Zuiliang. All these four calligraphers, the masters, they have their own styles in this specific script. So under they are all regular script, but they have own their own styles. So they have the different appearances in the shape, like you see here. For you to have a better look of these four styles, I selected a hen, a horizontal line for each person. This hen is also the Chinese character of E1, uh, Chinese character E, correspondingly from last slide. Um, take an observation. Because um, observation is really important. It's the first step for practice. As long as you can see what is the characteristic or what's the feature, or what's the point you need to write out, then you can use your technique to, to, to express it out. So if you don't see it, you cannot write it out. That's uh, the logic. So that's why observation is very important. Um, Yan Zhenqing here, the Hen from Yan's style, it's much stronger uh, and it um, has solid lines that uh, is more angular and pointed like this. 
and uh, it's very much thicker than other styles. <clears throat> and let's see Ouyang Xun. Ouyang's style um, is like more average uh, thickness, uh, more balanced and steady. When we, when we take the movement, you don't need to lift up or press down during the, the, the lines, in the middle of the lines here. Uh, whereas Liu Gongquan is like the combination of these two. Uh, he's not as strong as Yan style, but uh, still remains a bit thickness changing compared with Ouyang. So that because uh, actually Liu Gongquan is learned from these two masters. So it's like um you can find the source where these styles come from. The last but not least, Chu Sui Liang. It looks very much different from all these three. It is more like slender, more uh, have the uh, obvious curve, curveness compared with these three styles. So these four Han or Chinese character Yi is the can represent each style as you can see on the, sh the screen. So later on, before we practice the, the, the actual character, we can start from Hen first, from the basic stroke first. The thickness changing is very evident, as you can see. So uh, compared, to, compared with each one, they need carefully you, you will need to carefully regulate the thickness when you do the writings, the, the technique, through like precise control of the press and the pull techniques, which I will demonstrate later. Don't worry. Um, let's see. So these four uh, examples I showed you, and you can see they are all in black backgrounds with the white color characters, right? So they are not um, handwriting. Actually, they are handwritten hand on a stone, then carved out and rub it down. So I talked a lot about, uh, about rubbings in last session during the clerical topic. If you are interested, you can see the, the video replay. And uh, I would like to show you how the handwriting looks like. These two are examples later than Tang Dynasty. Still a lot of people writing uh, regular scripts, but masters not as much show up in Tang because that's the mature, that's the peak. So these two, um, uh, one is like still the same uh, period around Tang, and Zhang Mofu is later than Tang. So the you take a look of the handwriting. They are like uh, with ease and grace, the more fluently. And you can see slightly the connection between each strokes. Like you see here, there's a like very thin lines of uh, connect with one stroke with another. So that's, like more fluently handwriting version of the regular script, but not considered as running. That's a slight different. The still rubbing is more uh, motionless than the handwriting. And there are uh, there is a very specific category under uh, in the in the scope of the uh, the regular script which is called the small regular script. It's called small regular. That's because the size is very tiny. Um, as you can see here, the average size is usually smaller than two centimeters. And it's like one, uh, one to 1 1.5 centimeters, ideally, which is requirement for us to like when we do the art creation. So these three, are the examples that we usually to imitate or copy when we do the practice of more regular scripts. Um, this one, 
uh, Zhong Shao Jing Ling Fei Jing, uh, translated as Classic of Spiritual Flight, is actually in Metropolitan Museum of Art. I've been there and see it uh, clearly. So it's very exquisite and uh, tiny. And uh, if you have chance, I, I would highly recommend to see it personally. Okay, so about although the the all the styles are very different under the the regular script, they have the same rules compared with other style. So it, writing calligraphy, as you may know, that is full of the principles and regulations. And uh, compared with the CO style and clerical style I introduced before, the regular style shows differences like um, it's tilted to the uh, top right corner. It has very uh, evident the, the start and ending shape are different from clerical and CO. Uh, these two we've been practiced last time and before. So I would like to, to uh, show you more uh, apparently the, the difference are on the screen. This requires the techniques in it, different techniques to write it out. And as for, this is about the, the stroke. As for the whole structure, this shows you how they look different. So the, for example, the seal script structure is like more like standing tall shape. This is this is the yo. and clerical is like a uh, flat and uh, compressed uh, shape, while as the regular is very standard and squared shape. That's these three differences, and uh, I'm not talking about um, running and cursive. They have the, their own regulations. To summarize the principles. Um, of the regular script, as you can see here, it is well-defined and standard shape in the it has the slanted vertical lines or horizontal lines. Take a look at these two. This is the Chinese character of shang, up, it means up, shang. Um, if you see it in a seal, the last stroke here is very, horizontally uh, straight, but in regular, it is tilted. It's not straight. That's a little bit different from the scripts before uh, this regular script. And uh, about the structure, as I mentioned, it's roughly squared and uh, they have consistent radicals. So this character doesn't have radicals, it's a single character. So when it comes to the compound characters, the radicals is like more consistent, which means when you are able to write one radical, you can just use it in different characters that shares the same radicals. That's a tip for practicing. All right. Last time, uh, before we practice, we introduce the Shang Yuan Jie or called Yuan Xiao Jie because that, that was the time. Today, I would also like to introduce a national holiday because right now, literally right now, currently, China is having the national holidays, a three days break for this holiday. It's called Qingming Jie. It's like, like Memorial Day here. Xing Ming, these two characters, Xing means clear or pure. Ming means brightness because this festival comes at the beginning of spring when the sun shines brightly <clears throat> and the temperature rise, rises, rainfall increases, and that's the, the, like the um, atmosphere of the spring. Uh, Qingming is a sign for farmers to plant in spring, you know, times uh, still nowadays. Um, this is a spring, uh, this is a, a festival in spring, 
during Qingming, families will visit the tombs of their ancestors to to help them uh, clean the grave graveyards or grave sites and make a ritual offerings to their ancestors. The festival is originated from um, a, a name called Han Shi Jie, translated as cold food festival. Um, this is important because there is a very famous Chinese calligraphy art in Song Dynasty written by Su Shi. Is the Huangzhou Han Shi Jie, his poem as a uh, calligraphy art as well. <laughs> the name is called Cold Food Festival. So that's the the start, the origin original name of Qingming Jie. Then nowadays Qingming become like uh to to take place when people not celebrate, but the, when they do the the festival uh actions, they took the actions the same in the Qingming now. Traditionally, uh family will burn spirit money, the the the, the replica, joss paper, I'll call it, um, to burn it to 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 their uh old generations deceased people. They also burn like paper replicas of goods, material goods like cars, homes, sometimes a servant, paper servant. Yeah, it happens. Um in Chinese culture, it is believed that people will still need all of all of those things in the afterlife. And uh, also family members wanted to kuto before the tomb um, of the ancestors. Kuto is like um action that you will need to kneel down and bowing so low as your forehead to to touch the ground that's like the deep respect to other people still we do kuto to to seniors they when they show high respect mm, okay uh, about Qingming, i still want to introduce two more things food and drink yeah chinese Chinese the festival is always associated with food and drink. This is special kind of food called Qing Tuan. It is made of sticky rice mixed with the mugwort. Mugwort, grounded mugwort. It's kind of plant. I I only find the, uh, the, the, the translation when I do the research of how to describe Qing Tuan. I, I learned this word mugwort. And uh, it's usually filled with sweet red bean paste. That's Qing Tuan. And also uh, Qingming Festival is uh, also has a very significant uh, meaning for, for tea culture. Since this day, when people picked the, the tender shoot before Qingming, it is a special kind of a uh, product called Ming Qian Cha. Ming means Qingming. Qian means before. Cha means tea. So it's like tea picked before Qingming Jie. This kind of tender shoot tea leaves are prized for their uh, special aroma, um, um, tenderness with the most fresh taste. So that's precious. The most precious one can cost like up to thousands of dollars per pound. So it's very, only that specific time that you can pick is called Ming Qian Cha. All right, so here comes today's practice. It's the word Xing, Xing. This character means clear, Pure. And also is the character of Qing Dynasty, the Qing Chao is also this character. Uh, luckily, we have the same version in traditional and simplified of this character. So today I will introduce you how to write out this character in two styles. As uh, if you remember 
what I showed you before. There are four masters. So the first three is like um, a little bit similar. So I selected the most different one, the first one and fourth one, which is from Yan Zhenxin and from Chu Sui Liang. So one is in Yan style, the right part is from the Chu Sui Liang style. So I will introduce you how to write Qing in these two styles. Okay, so let's get ready with me. I will stop sharing and change my camera to my table and you can get your tools ready and let's start. All right. Mm. Camera. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a little bit before we start writing, uh, for the first time learners, I would like to introduce first about how to hold the brush pen. That's very important because uh, it has very specific uh, finger positions when holding the brush pen. So please do it with me. Here, we have three fingers first. And you see your last two fingers will be supporting the body. So as you can see, the, the, the index finger will not need to like uh, go this way, just relax and move freely and keep the pen vertical. That's the key and a very important when you do the choreography. So we'll see this from this angle. These three are together making the most function work in, in, in writing. And these two like supports and make when you do, do this kind of movement, it will use these two. So when you hold brush pen like this, you can make movements uh, from different direction. So that's why the position is very important. And also pay attention to your palm. It will be uh, facing to the writing surface all the time and do not open your wrist like this, put it down. Put it down like this. And in today's writing, you can put your elbow on the table. It depends on how, uh, like how big, uh, depending on the size of the character you were writing. Today, we are writing as big as the palm size. So uh, you can put your elbow or even your wrist down on the table. If you are writing on a size like a, like a book size, you will need to stand up or write uh, or or sit down with elbow lifting up. So that's different uh, depending on the size. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's about how to hold the brush pen. Yeah, I prepared um, the brush pen, ink dish. Let me put more in here. And a water bottle or water bowl here to, to wet your pen first. So this is a dry brush pen. I will need to wet it first. Soak it thoroughly and protect your, your brush tip. Do, do not do something like this. It will damage the tip. We will need to protect the tip, so we we sand it and uh, press down press down gently to make it soak with water and remove the water without dropping down. So that's the ready to go brush pan. Then we soak the whole brush pan into the ink. Still protect the tip that will help to make your brush pen live longer. Okay, so still soak it thoroughly 
uh, make sure the the hair absorb as much as much ink as possible, and then remove extra and reshape the brush pen to create the precise tip and without ink dropping down. So that's ready to go. All right. You can fold the paper into frames that you uh, that can help you with the size. Before we write the Qing character, let's start by practicing the stroke first. The strokes is Yan, Yan stroke and uh, Chu, these two. So I will demonstrate these two, particularly for today's practice. And you can feel free to, to practice others if you would like. Okay, so let's take a look of the Hen or Yi here. In Yan style. <clears throat> As I introduced, it's much stronger than others. You will need to press down harder for to, to make the thickness as the as whole. And then as you can see, it, it turns to a little bit a little bit thinner than the start, which means you will need to lift up gradually to make it thinner then do the ending shape. Let's do it first. Press down harder, move to the right, and end. I will do it again, take it slowly. I will do it slower than I actually write. So uh, when we actual writing is more naturally happened, it's not, not like, as slow as I demonstrate here. This is for demonstration only. Let me show you one more time. To create the shape of the start, you will need to press down very hard to create the thickness first. Then move to the right and lift up gradually. You'll see the thickness is changed. And Press down again and make a turn. That's how it ends. Okay, that's the that's how to write Hen in Yan style. Let's move on to Chu Sui Liang. You see the the lines more soft and not that strong or thick as yen style and it has very like small and round um, start and ending. I will do it here. So press just a little bit with the start lift up and go to the right, press down harder and go back. You see the thickness is different. Like you start with a thin start. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, start with press down first, then thin, then thick. So that's something like this. <clears throat> well, whereas in yen, it's like most thick, then lift up to the thing, then press down harder. So it's a different changing, changing, trend or the, the, the direction you will need to focus on. I will do it again in Chu. Press a little bit, lift up, press down, and make a turn. So the whole line is like very fluently written out without like this one stronger. So press down, and lift, straight, uh, lift up and straight and press down. So that's the difference of these two. This one, you will need to like, like make a wave, make a wave, something like this. That's the difference of Hen, in Yan and Chu. Okay, so 
about the character of skin. Let's start by, uh, let's start from Yen's style as well. I would do it first. <clears throat> Take a look and then you can practice after I show you the whole character's writing. The stroke order is from left to left to right and from top to bottom. First is a dot. Second dot is in different shape and different technique. Third. Pen. You see, this is a short version of the, the, the longer one, so what we just practiced. So it's a, a still the same technique. Make variations when you see the difference. So for example, the first one has the thicker ending pose, while the second one is a little bit lighter than the first one. And the vertical line is always thicker than the horizontal. We'll go straight, go upward, press down again. There's a yue underneath. So we start with shu first. Ending, press down, there's the thickness, then go up. One and two. <clears throat> That's a chin. So take a look at the character. You will find the radical is the sandian shui. So it takes a smaller a portion of the whole character and it's shorter. It's not as long as the right part. Right, you see it's just the height of this size, not like the same as the right part. And also for the right part, you can see there that you can divide it into two parts as well. And the first is the top, three lines go upward. And the vertical, it can go through the yue underneath. And also please, be uh pay attention to uh the 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 forwardness or not straight straight to the horizontal because I always I always told my uh students that do not copy a a computer font because that's not a handwriting. You see in this team the all the lines are horizontally placed. But actually, in Hai Shu, it, it is not. So that's very different from a uh, computer font. So when you do um, calligraphy writing or practicing, I would highly recommend to find a classical piece instead of write a character in computer font. Okay. Okay, I would do Qing one more time in Yan style here. First a dot from this angle. Second here. Third go up. One. Two. Vertical first. Horizontal line. Yeah. So this is Qing. So when you do the practice, you will always find 
a difference between your writing and the example. So what you will need to do is after one character's writing, take a compare. You compare yours and with the uh, uh, classics and find out the difference, and that may be the mistake or or uh, misplacement of the structures and stru the the strokes. Anything you find different would be a sign that you will need to improve for next one. For example, let me take off mine with his. Uh, I find. These two strokes are very close than it should be, right? This is because the second stroke is lower. So if I do a third one, I will correct it by putting the second dot a little bit higher. So that's like the logic of practice. Why practice makes perfect? Because practice is correcting. Do not repeat, <clears throat> repeat by, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> do not repeat by with, uh, without any thinking or just copy, copy and copy. That's not, uh, like the regular, the, like the correct practice method. The practice in calligraphy needs you to correct the, the, the fault, the mistakes that you made and make it better and better and better then the repeat will be uh, meaningful. Okay, let's move on to the true style of Qing. As you can see, a uh, very thin uh, strokes compared with Yan Zhenqing's style. Let me do it first, then let's take a uh, observation together. Okay, this is Qing <clears throat> in Chu's style. And uh, not only about what I introduced before, the difference as you can see very uh, evidently. Also, I would like to mention the curveness you may miss. For example, the Yue here. I take a closer look of these two. So this Yue is like the straight, two lines from top to bottom. Whereas here, there's a slight curve, curveness of the year vertical line here, which, which make it makes it more difficult to, to write it out. And also the right vertical line is like, like this shape. This is very uh, subtle, but if without doing it correctly, it won't show up as accurate as the example. I will do it again the second time. Uh, also, it, sh it shares the same uh, radical thing. For example, it's smaller than the right part. Uh, it's thinner than the right part. And in the vertical or the, the shoe also shares in, in the middle. Okay, I will do it one more time.
toughness. So detail matters. Uh, take observation before you go, before you write on the paper. And uh, um, um, do not be do not be afraid to make mistakes because that that's how you got progress. You correct them and you will be better than before. So that's the tip and the key for calligraphy practice. Okay, uh, I can take practice of the 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 hor uh, the horizontal line and qin in two different versions. And I will take a review of the chat box to see if you have any questions. Let me see that mugwort is coming up in my garden now. Oh, great. And uh, maybe you can try to find the recipe of how to make qin kuan. <laughs> yeah, oh, you make your own qin kuan at home, yes. Um, sa zi is a fried, form, a fried food. Yes, yes, I know about sa fan zi. It's also um, a very typical food to, to do in Code Food Festival. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Ting Mei. Thank you for your sharing. Very good. Uh, where can I purchase in container? In container, uh, it's like uh, the it, uh, what I use here is a puzzling dish. If you want to do it quick or or cheap, you can just use any ink dish that you use the. Uh, from the the tableware, you can find uh, the the porcelain dish that is the most quickest is the quickest way that you can find as a ink container. Otherwise, you will need a ink stone, which I introduced in the first session. You can find a review in um YouTube link that you will find my recommendation list. Um. The recipe. Oh, <laughs> you're very interested in the in the in the Qing Kuan, right? You, I think you can find it online. The 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 recipe. Yes, mugwort is the green to add the sticky rice flour. That's the green comes from from the mugwort. Very nice. Um, uh, Malin asked about the brush is the go here uh go here so this one is like qi yang like 70 percent of gold here with uh 30 percent of elastic fiber so it's not uh, it, so it's like 70 percent of yang hao it's a mix combined but with mostly yang hao so it's softer than my other brush pens. But it's not as soft as 100% Yang Hao. Because... Yes, you are correct. <laughs> yes, that's not, it's not 100% Yang Hao. It has some elastic feature that I can use during writing. That's why I chose this. Um, Sherman in Chu style where the Shu cross is lower than the third Hun stroke. That is an intentional feature. Let me see where the shoe cross is lower than the third. Oh, this here. Um, this is not intentionally, not intentionally. I guess because when I do it quick. Oh, dry out already. When I do it quick or natural writing, it goes something like this. You see. It goes like this. So it's like inner connected. When you do such motions, you you will not focus on how it's being covered or not. Sometimes they will go underneath a little bit because there's the press down and lift up uh, technique here. So I guess that that's how it comes from with a, a top, uh, with something comes out of the hen here, but it's not intentionally. 
you see in Yan style, nothing comes on, or I did a little bit, but it's okay because in such circumstances, it's allowed to to do such uh, movement or or shape like this. So it's not wrong and not intentionally. I would suggest um, when you do the practice, you just go naturally. Do not copy the shape uh, intentionally. It is helping you to write more fluently. That's the purpose, not to copy the shape, uh, not writing naturally. Tendons one, thank you. I feel such beauty when I see you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Maida, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your work. That's very, thank you. Is it viewed as incorrect if the shoe is too short? Depending on how short it is. There are sh three shoe related strokes. One is this one, second, third. So in this style, the lengths are different, right? And in this one, it's almost the same length. So it depends on how short the, the shoe you're writing. If it's reasonable or you can find the source from the classic pieces, I think it's okay. If nothing, if nobody has been written that before, you invented something that, that may have a question mark about that. So. German also, is there a gap between the end of Shu and the third Hen? Oh, I think that's the same question about. Yes, I was just trying to clarify the prior question. Like the first time you answered, it was my question, it was a little too long, and you explained that. I guess, is there a problem if it's a little too short? Like maybe you made the two Shu too short, and then the third hung to keep the same horizontal spacing, it ends up like the shoe doesn't touch the hung, is that viewed as bad or problematic? Uh, I Your voice is a little bit low, but I, my, I'm guessing your, your question is if the vertical line is a little bit shorter and not reach the hen, is it okay yes. to do that? Is that your question? Yes. Oh, um, yes, do. It, it depending on how short you are. So let me show you other variations about qing, also, if you know, without Sandy and Shui, it's the character of Qing. So, if you do something like this, I think it's okay. But if you do too short, something like this, is it's wrong. You know what I mean? So, depending on how you make movement to the next joke, that's the key. For example, I if I go cross, the next joke it's okay and uh not to reach the body a little bit go up from the top it's okay but too long too too live too far away that's not correct could you uh, from melissa could you please repeat the left side water radical of course let me do it here uh which version are you referring to i would do both i think um the first one is stronger and press harder than the second one. So you get thickness. See, I'm I'm leaving these two closer than my writing before. My second one is very tiny and uh, round shape. So let's clean just clean make clean and neat and small triangle shape here. That's two different writing of the word radical. Mm. Um, also, uh, from Marilyn, the corner strokes are developed in Yan and the uh, Chu. Can you expand more? Uh, the, Corner stroke, if you're referring to the turning here, 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are. Um, they share the similar techniques, but they have differences here. So in yen still, it's go it goes stronger. You know, see, so you press harder, and you can make slight stop here, and then go downward. That's how it turns. And while the chu style is more thin and go from, it's like the curveness from the top. So it's like round turn, press down as well. Then not that thick when you go down. So a little bit different from the top horizontal line and also the turning. That's the difference. Also the hooks are different. Mm, the hook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here goes up. This is the yen and chu. It, it shares the same, but only the size is different. If you can understand the, the, the difference. Uh so miss store yeah i i see that store before you can take a look and uh, find uh, the tools that suitable for you to use i think it's okay and also amazon has a uh, different kinds of brushes that you can explore what is the meaning of the radical the radical means uh i think i will take that as the last question uh in seal script shui is like it's pictograph. So this is a shui. If qing, uh, qing che de qing is, the right side would be the same and with the yue. So that's something like um, um, in seal script. Oh, sorry. It's not in camera. This is shui in seal script. Then in, when in clerical, it already become abbreviated form of shui. This is more like water flow this way. It is more water flow like from left to right. And then it goes to the hai shu, san dian shui. And this point to the next joke you are writing. So, so it's not something randomly shaped. Not not different, not randomly pointy to a, a direction. It's going to the next joke. That's the inner connection. All right, a lot of for today, and I will share my uh, writings and with the examples later to Lin Lao Shi, and he can send follow up email to you, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Su Lao Shi. Sorry, Su Lao Shi. One more question from our uh -huh. So, is it necessary to use different kind of brush depending on the scripts written, such as regular, running, and cursive? Oh yeah, I mentioned that in the first session. The the to be short, as a beginner, you would not need to, uh, to try different versions. But when you go to an advanced level, you want you to use them to to improve your writings. So it's like when you as a beginner, you may need you may do not you you don't recognize the difference. That's why. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. All right. So... If, yeah, if you have any questions, you can send me emails or uh talk to Ling Lao or anything. You can contact us to see if you have any questions or comments. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone. So hope you all enjoyed the today's session. So with Su Lao Shi. And uh, I before uh, leaving, I also would like to remind everyone, so next month, May, will be our last session for this season. For this season. So do register and come back with us and with Su Lao Shi to practice Chinese calligraphy. So uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Thank you. 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 Thank you.